indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to this special writer's edition of Pointless Celebrities. The quiz where the aim of the game is to score as few points as you can, and you do that by coming up with the answers no one else could think of. Let's meet today's Pointless Celebrities. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Martina Cohen, crime author. I'm Peter James, I write crime thrillers. Couple number two. I'm Grace Dunn. I'm an author and a broadcaster and a restaurant critic. Ooh. I'm Hanif Qureshi and I'm a novelist, a screenwriter, short story writer and a, a essay writer. <laughs> Couple number three. Hello, I'm Fern Britton and I'm a presenter and author. Hello, I'm Jilly Cooper, and I'm a journalist and author. <laughs> and finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Charlie Higson, and I am an actor and a writer. And I'm Sally Gardner, and I'm a children's writer, and I've branched into being an adult writer. Thanks very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to Pointless. It's lovely to have you all here. We'll get to chat to you each, of course, throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's available in all good bookshops. It's my Pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Good evening to you. Good evening. What a classy lineup for huh? once. I know. This is <laughs> nice, isn't it? This would be a good dinner party. Um, podium four there, we have pointless royalty. We've got Don't Charlie worry. Higson there. Not only has he got a pointless answer in the past, uh, he's won a pointless trophy. I think he's, he's got two. also won the jackpot. Get How out about, of about that? that? Can you imagine such yeah. a thing? No, no. And podium three, talking of royalty, Jilly <sighs> Cooper and Fern Britton. How about I know. that? I know. If I was on any of the other podiums, I would let them win. That's what I would do. I just think it would be a, it would be a classy thing to do. And talking of classy, very classy on podium two. Yes. Grace Dent and Hanif Qureshi. <laughs> it's not your normal Saturday night BBC lineup. I'm going to say that. It's a treat, isn't it? And podium one, two of my absolute favourite crime writers as well. We're brilliant at crime writing in this country. We've got some of the best crime writers in the world, and we've got two of the very best here as well, Peter and Martina. Um, it's going to be a cracker, isn't it? Round one. The good news is, perfect for a wordsmith. Wow, round yeah. what a trail. Also a lovely round if you're a fan of hearing Zander using foreign accents, which I am. Wow. <laughs> round one, coming soon. Yeah. Wow. It's not bad, is it? <laughs> you're reading on, aren't you? Yeah, I'm reading on. Turning that page, in fact, right now. As usual, all of today's questions have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here are looking for those all-important, pointless answers. If you find one of those answers that none of our 100 people gave, then we'll add £250 to the jackpot. Now, as today's show is a celebrity special, and each of our celebrities is playing for a nominated charity, we're going to start off with a jackpot of £2,500. There it is. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. The only thing you have to remember is this. The pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated. So keep your scores as low as you possibly can. And there'll be no conferring till we get to our head-to-head -head round. OK, our first category this evening is... Languages. There we are, languages. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? Mm -hmm. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> and the question concerns... German and Spanish clothing. <laughs> Rich. Yeah. If I know this lot, if there's one thing they revised, it was German and Spanish clothing. <laughs> uh, on each board, we're going to show you the German and Spanish terms for a series of uh, bits of clothing or accessories. You just need to give us the English term, please. There's going to be seven on the first board, seven on the second, 14 and all to have a go at at home. Oh, we get the German and the Spanish. German and Spanish. So you get to do your German accent, which <laughs> is justly uh, lauded wow. the world over, and your Spanish yeah. accent, which yes. is also coming on. It's coming on, yeah. yeah. Um, OK, so we are looking for the English terms, the English equivalents of these German and Spanish... Clothes and accessories. And accessories. And accessories. Oh, yes. Yeah. Nice. OK, well, here they come. Die Sonnenbrille, las gafas de sol. De tonjou, la zapatilla de deporte. De pulley. El sweater, der Bustenhalter, 
el sostén, der hut, el sombrero, der schal, la bufanda, die handtasche, el bolso de mano. Thank you. <coughs> it's, hard, it's a hard transition it you have to make there, isn't it? Yeah. I'll read those all again. De son umbrella, las gafas de sol. De tuncho, la zapatilla de deporte. De pulli, el sweater. De buschenhalter, el zosten. De hut, el sombrero. De shawl, la bufanda. De handtasche, el bolso de mano. There we are. Peter, welcome to Pointers. Great to have you with us this Thank evening. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, now, tell me about Absolute Proof. Absolute Proof is a departure from my regular crime novels. It's mm. a story about what would happen if somebody claimed to have conclusive proof that God existed. So it's a thriller set around the kind of that whole theme. I had a phone call out the blue in 2003 from an elderly guy. He said, I, yeah. is that Peter James, the author? I go, oh, yes. And he <laughs> said, I, I'm not a nutcase. I was a pr retired professor of mathematics. I've been given absolute proof of God's existence. And I've been told you're the author who'll help me get taken seriously. Oh, wow. He so said, I, I need to come see you. I'm going to need four days of your time. Wow. <laughs> I said, look, I can give you a cup of tea in half an hour, because I was intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the starting point. Well, did he sort of bring an overhead projector with him and some pens? <laughs> he brought a 1,250-page manuscript that God's representative had channeled to him. Wow. And, an, and, and an old guy with a beard. An old guy with a beard. <laughs> and, and three pieces of information nobody on this planet knows. He had the uh, location of the compass coordinates for the location of the Holy Grail and the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, yeah, it's interesting, interesting that, it should be, that it should be a mathematician and not a theologian mm. or, or, you know, that of, of all the things yeah. to come to you. Anyway, that's fascinating. I can't wait for that to come out. Uh, Thank now, you. Peter, we have to turn our minds to this, the Spanish and German clothing and accessories issue. I'm kind of looking at Handtash, Bolsa de Mano. It's my family of glove makers, so I'm going to go for glove. For de Handtasche. El bolso de mano, glove, says Peter. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said glove. Oh! Oh! Sorry. Oh, Ooh. that may not be the last incorrect answer, so don't worry. But I'm afraid that was an incorrect answer and it scores you 100 <laughs> points. I'm sorry about that. Well, absolutely right. It's a good punt, though, but, yeah, it may mm. well not be the, uh, the only one answer. I'll give all the correct mm. answers at the end of the pass. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Grace, welcome <laughs> to Pointless. Wonderful Hello. to have you. Now, you actually, you actually read English literature. Yes, I did. So you, when yeah, you read so English I... literature, which I also did, people yeah. always say, oh, so you're going to be a writer or a teacher. Um, but you I... actually, you've, you've, you're living the dream. I am doing exactly the thing that I always wanted to do. I don't mean being here. <laughs> 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 I, I didn't know. I wasn't so specific in my dream, Whoa. but, yeah, I mean, Ouch. it is lovely, lovely to be here until oh. I saw these. I was oh. hoping for some a gentle literary round, maybe, to begin with. This is... So if I'm standing like a rabbit in the headlights, it's because I, I did uh, German at GCSE and have realised mm, I know not a single word anymore <laughs> and was actually just a truant. <laughs> <laughs> um, and talk to me about your, your restaurant reviewing. Oh, yeah. Uh, how long have you been doing that? You're on the Evening Standard. Isn't yes, I, I've been doing that for five or six years. Do you find, because obviously, inevitably, you become part of the food scene if yes. you're a, re a regular reviewer. It's hard to be completely objective, presumably, or do you...? You, you can still be objective. It, is, it does get more difficult. Yeah, yeah, it does. And also, you can't be in disguise, because, no. you know, if I went in disguise, people would just say, why has Grace Dent got a blonde wig on? Yeah. And also, she you'd have to eat okay? the same rubbish food that the rest of us get served, you know, you wouldn't get the... I know, that would be, actually, that would be hideous. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that you learn to know when you're being butted up and you learn to try to avoid people at parties. Very good, very sensible. Uh, Grace, what would you like to go for on our, on um, our board here? I'm finding this hard because uh, I'm not 100% sure on any of them. However, De Pulli and El Sweater sounds to me like a, a jumper. El Sweater, De Pulli. El, 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 a jumper. A jumper. But let's see, that is a jumper. It is. 49. <laughs> 49 for a world. jumper. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done indeed. Well done. I love the fact that pulley and sweater is, is essentially just what my nan would call them, and they've just, the Germans oh, yeah. and Spanish have yeah. stolen them. Do you know if you don't get new clothes for Christmas in, in Iceland, 
Uh, the tradition is the giant Christmas cat will eat you. <laughs> but yeah, giant Christmas cat. It's nice, giant isn't it? Christmas cat. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Fern, welcome back to Pointless. Hi. Now then, you're busy writing your seventh novel. Yep. I mean, you've, you've had huge success as a, as a Astonishing, writer. Astonishing, I know. But it's, it's... You were in television presenting before that. Did this come out of the fact that, as we all know, television presenting involves an awful lot of sitting around? Honestly, um, I wasn't doing any work at all and someone rang me up and said, do you want to write a book? <laughs> and I thought, I don't know that I can. And she said, oh, that's fine, we'll look after you. And um, so that was seven books ago, yes. Do you always write in the same place? Is that, do you yes, have a particular I room? I just look at a wall, no music, nothing, just yeah. do it. She's yeah. very, very good. She is very good. I loved you. Very good. Oh. <laughs> uh, now, Fern, how good is your Spanish and German? Um, OK, so there are a couple of obvious and there's a dangerous one. Um, we're going to go for the bottom one and hope that that is a handkerchief. A handkerchief? I tell you what, it's not. Not a glove. Anyway, OK, let's have a look. Um, uh, handkerchief. Let's see if that is right. Maybe it is. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Oh, no, it's not looking good. No. No, no! no. Oh, sorry! Oh! oh. oh. Don't worry. The Curse of the Hunt Tusher. Um, <laughs> That'd be a good book, The Curse of the Hunt Tusher. The Curse of the Hunt Tusher. Oh, I'm having that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, it's not yeah. a glove, it's not a handkerchief. There's almost nothing left. <laughs> what can it be? <laughs> Possibly be. Uh, there we go. Uh, Charlie, welcome back. Lovely to have you with us. Well, it's lovely to be back. Your books have been translated into 24 languages. I think so, yes. I not by me. I'm not sure I even know 24 languages. Can you tell me which languages they are? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told that statistic. I've never actually checked it out. I know. 24 languages. I mean, how many languages are there? I mean, obviously, there are lots of languages. in the world? And, uh, well, I know, thousands. I know. But sort of main... There is absolutely no way you couldn't name 24 languages. Oh, I suppose. English. So, yeah, I can't. French, German, French, Spanish, 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 Italian, Italian yes, Basque, yes. Um, <laughs> Portuguese. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, really hard. Yeah, I, I know, know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what? <laughs> OK, now, now, Charlie, this yes. board is all yours. Please, will you fill in all these unanswered questions for well, us? Well, the top one looks to me like it could be sunglasses. The second one is a shoe of some sort. A Bustenhalter. That's got to be a bra, hasn't it? The hut and the sombrero has got to be a hat. I mean, that, I think, is the one that people have been avoiding. And I think the last one's probably a handbag, but... A handbag, yes. Um, so I'm going to go for the Bustenhalter <laughs> because it's the most fun one. It yeah. is. <laughs> the Bustenhalter. It's not wrong, eh? A bra. Let's see if that's right. Is it a bra? How many people said it? Oh, uh, well done. Yes. Oh, wow. Brilliant. Uh, brilliant. The Bustenhalter is a bra. 29 people said it, but they were all thinking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it literally means the bust holder. They don't muck about the Germans, no, do they? they don't. They <laughs> really don't. Um, shall we fill this in? You did rather well, actually, Charlie. Uh, the top one is sunglasses. Well done. Would we'll have scored you 32. Uh, the next one down, it's the type of shoe, it's a training shoe. Trainer. Oh. So it would we'll have scored nine points. Well done if you said that at home. Yeah, der Hut and el sombrero. It's hat. Only 75. Mm. Uh, de Chal, uh, La Bufonda. The Chal is sure. kind of a clue. It's, it's a scarf. A scarf. Ah. scarf. Not a million miles off, 18 points. And I wonder what this bottom one is. Yeah. Mm. It is... Handbag. A handbag. Yeah. Well oh, done, Charlie. Oh, Would have scored you 14 points. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a quick look at those scores. 29, Charlie. Very well done. Best score of the par. So, Charlie and Sally looking very safe at this stage. 49 is where we find Grace and Hanif. Uh, 100 is where we have Fern, Jilly, Peter and Martina all tied. So, Jilly and Martina, it's going to be between you to see who stays and who leaves at the end of this round. Best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more German and Spanish terms on the board, and here they are. We have got... Der Gürtel, el Cinteron, der Rock, la falda, die Bluse, la blusa, der Badeanzug, el traje de baño, der Hanschu, el guante, die Jacke, la chacueta, der Stiefel and la bota. 
Sorry, I'll do that again, a little bit quicker. <laughs> uh, here we go. Der Gürtel, el Cinteron, der Rock, la falda, die Bluse, la Blusa, der Badianzug, el Traje de Baño, der Hanschu, el Guante, die Jacke, la Chacueta, and der Stiefel, la Bota. Phew, there we are, we've made it. Sally, welcome to Pointless. Now, Sally, you only learnt to read at the age of 14. That's correct. This is true. You suffer yes. from exquisite dyslexia. Absolutely. And, uh, and then but you were an illustrator. Yes. And then were encouraged by your publisher. To, to be a writer. To be a writer. Yes. That's incredible. Tell me about that. Well, I was an illustrator and I sort of did all right. And then I had a wonderful editor who I worked with. And she said, you know, I think you really are a writer. So just could you get on with it? <laughs> and the first book I ever did, I was so worried about it that I wrote it in sort of children's exercise books. Yeah. And I put it in a bag on a bus with a hole in it. And I thought if it all fell out before it got to the publishing house, then I was obviously not meant to be a writer. <laughs> Unfortunately, it sort of stuck in the bag till I got there. And that book was published without one thing being altered. Never happened what again. What about that? Amazing. Yeah, no, Amazing good. story. <laughs> So the question is, do you conceive stories verbally or are they sort of pictures? In, no, they're they pictures. I, I get them in pictures and then I sort of get them so I can walk around them and yeah. like a film set. I can sort of alter the scenery. Yeah. Like, I wish I could alter myself from now. Like, <laughs> whisk off. <laughs> now, listen, you're the low scorers. You've yes, got, uh, you're yes. in a very luxurious position, thanks to Charlie's yes. hard work there. Um, but, um, what would you like to go for on this board, Sally? Well, I, I, I think I'm going to go for the top, de Gertel, and I think it's a skirt, but I'm not sure. A skirt, mm. says Sally. A skirt. Mm. Let's see if that's right. Here is your red line. If you can get below this red line, Sally, uh, with the skirt, then you are through to the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Let's see if it's right. Oh. Oh. Bad luck. <laughs> Unfortunately, not as good. It sounded very, very likely. I thought that was a very good answer, but I'm afraid a wrong answer, as it turns out. Scores you 100 points. 129 is your total. Yeah, sorry, Sally, we did say at the start that we might see more than one uh, 100 answer. I think this board's even harder, if anything, isn't it? I think it is, it? yeah. Um, Jilly, welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you here. Now, talking of losing things on a bus, your first novel, you lost a whole draft. Mm. Or was it on the underground or something like no, that? it was on a bus. It was on a bus as well. The awful shaming thing was I, 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 I took it out because I was quite near the end, I want to correct it, and I took it out to lunch. And I, I, had, I can't Freud anything, I can't remember who I had lunch with. And then I got on the 22 <laughs> bus and I got back to Putney and it had gone. My book had gone. Which book was it? It's called Riders. It was Riders, <gasps> it was. So, but it was how long before you rewrote it? 15 years. Oh, <laughs> no. Imagine finding that. Could have made Awful. a fortune. Awful. But whoever found it would have... They could have become you. The bus conductor's novel. Before, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jilly, there you are on 100. The high score is now 129. So if you can score 28 or less, then you step through to round two. I think I go back to number one. And I think that might be the belt or a girdle or something. <gasps> a belt. A belt. So let's see if that's right. Here is your red line. There's not as low as I thought it was going to be. There we are. If you can get below that with belt, you are through to the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said belt. It's right. Jimmy. And you're through. Very well done indeed. Daniel Very good. 15. 150 is your total. Yeah, very well played. That was well done, wasn't it? Belt. That's very well done. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now then, Hanif, welcome. Thank you. Good to have you here. When, when you introduced yourself, you have been a great many things. Is there one of those that you think is the, is the thing that encompasses all the rest? If you, could only, if you could only do one. Well, I think all the writers here will probably be uh, equally aware that uh, we all have to make a living. So yeah. I look out the window and see if my children have enough clothes on and, and, and whether I need to... If I write a movie, you get uh, uh, more money. If you write a novel, uh, uh, similarly, and so on. So it depends on, 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 on the school year, really. Do you, have you ever gone back to the stage? Because you, 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 obviously, you were an acclaimed playwright before you, you found success as a, as a screenwriter. Have I was thinking about this last night because I was watching TV last night and I was thinking, thank God I'm not at the theatre. Because when you're watching the telly, you can turn over, mm -hmm. of course, in the theatre, you obviously... You can't do that. So yeah. I, I'm writing for TV now and I love the TV and, of course, you never... 
forget that the, 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 the viewer can turn over. Uh, well, although, although, <laughs> don't. Don't would be my... <laughs> <laughs> Always best not to remind them, I think. Yes. In the, uh... Uh, Hannah, what would you like to go for? You were on 49, the high scorers are on 129 over there on the far podium, so 79 or less keeps you in the game. Um, I would say that the third one down is probably a blouse. OK, a blouse for Die Blouse. Let's see if that's right. Here is your red line. If you're below that red line, you're through to round two. How many of our 100 people said a blouse? Is right. And it's good enough. Look at that, 66. <laughs> Takes your total up to 115, where you join Gillian Fern, in fact. Very well played. You worry slightly for the 34. A little bit. Go blueser, blueser. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Martina, welcome to Pointless. Thank Great you. to have you. Now, I have read a lovely fact, which is apparently your novels are the most often stolen from shops... Yes. ..and the most often requested in prisons. Yes, in prisons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very proud of that. It's a lovely fact. It should be a Pointless fact, really. Well, it should be a Pointless <laughs> I'm going to store that away. But that's wonderful. I mean, then, actually, that reflects very, very well on your writing. I well, I think I'm very lucky. I mean... I write from the point of view of the criminal a lot of the time, so I think it's, you know, it is quite a compliment that criminals it's think an that endorsement, the books are it? so good they want to steal them. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, there you are on 100. The high score is still on that far podium, 129. You have to score 28 or less to stay I with us. I got that. I was going to go for belt, actually, and then I was going to go for blouse. Um, but I'm going to go for, I think, de Jacques or la chacuette. I think it's a jacket. De Jacques. De chacuette. I've... Well, let's see. Here is your red line. If you get below that with jacket, you are into the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for jacket. Is right. Oh. 57. Well, like that. 57. <laughs> that takes your total up to 157. Charlie's next pointless trophy has come back into sharp focus. Richard. Shall we go through the rest of the answers? I'm going to give one of these questions to Peter as well as we go through them. Uh, De Rock La Falda. Now, funnily enough, that's a skirt. Uh, rock and a falda. That would have scored you 11 points. De Badenzug and El Traje de Bano is swimming costume. Yeah. Yes. Nine points for that. Now, Peter, we've already seen that the Germans call a, uh, call a bra a bust holder. What do you think a handshoe is? A handshoe is a glove. It is a glove, yeah. yeah <laughs> absolutely right. And that would have scored 32. Uh, and uh, De Stifo and La Bolta would have seen you through to the next round. A boot. Uh, shoe. It is a boot. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a boot. And that would have scored 13 points. So swimming cost you the best answer on that board. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our first round, the pair we have to send home with their high score of 157. I'm so sorry, Martina and Peter, it's you. Oh. As, as Richard said, I mean, ideally, we just keep you all here for the whole show, which would be lovely. Um, but sadly, we can't. Well, a great pleasure Thank to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Martina and Peter, fabulous. Thank Thank you. You. <laughs> But for the main three pairs, it's now time for round two. <laughs> and so three pairs remain. Very well done, all of you, for making it through Sally and Charlie. Phew, that was close. But anyway, very, very best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this evening is... Fictional characters, appropriately enough. Fictional characters. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... ..characters on Royal Mail stamps. Richard. Yeah, every now and again, the Royal Mail bring out special collections of stamps. We're going to show you the names of four of those collections and we need you to name any character who appeared on one of these stamps, please. So, any character who appeared in any of the following collections of Royal Mail stamps. OK, so, as Richard has said, we're going to put a list up on the board. That list will remain for the whole round. We won't be changing it halfway through the round, just so you know. Let us see what is on that list. Here it comes. Mr. Men and Little Miss, 2016, there were ten characters in that series. Beatrix Potter, 2016, there were six characters in that series. Star Wars, 2015, there were 11 characters in that series. And Thomas the Tank Engine, 2011, there were seven characters in that series. So, Mr. Men and Little Miss, Beatrix Potter, Star Wars and Thomas the Tank Engine. We want any fictional character from those lists. Grace. <laughs> Oh, Grace. OK. Um, I'm going to go with my very favourite Mr Man, 
just hope because it's quite obscure, it, it'll be down the list. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it Mr. does. Mr Tickle. It... Mr Tickle. OK, let's see if Mr Tickle is in that selection <laughs> of Mr Men and Little Miss characters. And if he is, how many of our 100 people said Mr Tickle? Ah, oh, he's there. Good answer, 15. Very well done indeed. <laughs> indeed, great. Great. Fifteen for Mr. Tickle. Oh, that was a gutsy answer, wasn't Isn't it, Mr. It? Tickle? That's scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah, his arms are twenty bananas long, according to the official Mr. Men website. <laughs> That's why I chose him. Because his arms are twenty bananas <laughs> I love long. Him. He's my favourite one because he can put his arm right down and make toast and tea in the morning and come back up. Without getting out of bed. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. You, listen, you and me both. It's, it's, it's exactly <laughs> yeah. the same. I, lo I love the guy. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Jilly. Um, I'd like to do um, Beatrix Potter. And which character are you going to go for? Um, Mrs Tiggywinkle. Mrs Tiggywinkle says Jilly. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mrs Tiggywinkle. It's right. 15 is the only score posted so far. Mrs Tiggywinkle is 18. Very well done indeed. Thank you. Got such a great kind of sixth sense spoiler at the end, hasn't it, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, where, where yeah. she finds out she's a hedgehog. Yeah. And you don't know. I mean, whew, that took me. I mean, that is yeah. a twist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't you think? Yeah. I did not see it coming. I'm going to be honest with you. Thank you very much, Richard. Charlie. Mm. I'll go for Star Wars and I'll go for Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Yeah. Boba yeah. Fett says Charlie. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Boba Fett. It's right. Go on. 18 is our high score, 15 is our low for now. Oh, yeah. the score. Charlie Higson. <laughs> Just gets better and better. Uh, that is a pointless answer. It has £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £2,750. It scores you absolutely nothing. Gives you a score of naught. Very <laughs> well done indeed. It's an unstoppable force. That, that is why he's a legend, isn't it? Yeah. That yeah. is very... Even yeah. I was kind of going, are you sure? Oh, yes, yeah, he's there. That's good. <laughs> I, I would replace the Queen on regular stance with Boba Fett. <laughs> I had anything to do with it. Well, there we are. Thank you very much indeed. We are halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. The best score of the past was yours, Charlie. Very well done. A uh, score of nothing there. Then we travel up to 15, where we find Grace and Hanif, and then up to 18, where we find Jilly and Fern. You're not way ahead, Fern, but we need a kind of Boba Fett-type answer from you. That's yeah. what we're looking for Thanks. in this next pass. Good luck with that. <laughs> uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, so, Sally, remember, we are looking for these fictional characters that featured on Royal Mail stamps. <laughs> and if you can score 17 or less, you're definitely in the next round. Jemima Puddleduck? Jemima Puddleduck says, Sally, let's see how many of our 100 people said Jemima Puddleduck. Here comes your red line. Get below that, you're into the head-to-head. -head. Oh, it's yes. right. Look at that! You needed 17, you got 17. That gives you a score of 17, a total of 17. Oh, someone should do a book with Jemima Puddleduck and Boba Fett together. <laughs> that I would read. Yeah, yeah. Something to think about, isn't it's it? It's certainly something to think about. Um, Fern. Yeah. Fern, you're the high scorers at the moment. So all I can say is, yes, you just need a really low score at this Yes, point. thank you. Ideally a minus <laughs> one. I'm going to go for Beatrix Potter, Tom Kitten. Mm -hmm. Tom Kitten, mm -hmm. says Fern. Tom Kitten, no red line for you as you're the high score. It's only just. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Tom Kitten. Is it right? Oh, no. It is right! <gasps> That's a good answer. Down it goes. Oh, it's coming up. Very well done, indeed. One. <laughs> Taking your total up to 19. This is very exciting. Very exciting. I'll tell you what, we didn't cover ourselves in glory in the German-Spanish round, but this has been yeah. amazing. Oh, <laughs> terrific That's stuff. incredible. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Hanif. By the way, you're on 15. The high score at the moment is 19, so you have a target of three. Three or less. I've never seen Star Wars, but I'm going to go for Star Wars. 
<laughs> he's good. He's good. <laughs> this could this could go one of two ways. This. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to go for Han Solo. Han Solo. OK, Han Solo. Here is your red line. It's a low one. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Han Solo. <laughs> 19 people said Han Solo, taking your total up to 34. Unlucky, Hanif, but rather neatly, Han Solo is German for one glove, so thank <laughs> you for that. <laughs> now, lots and lots of answers, very, very few pointless answers. Boba Fett uh, was one, the Emperor also won for Star Wars, and Toby for Thomas the Tank Engine. They're the only pointless answers across the whole lot of stamps, so terrific stuff. Low scorers, one point for Bertie and Daisy on uh, Thomas the Tank Engine, one point for Kylo Ren, Ray and Finn on Star Wars. Yoda would have scored you two points. Mm. One point on Mr. Men and Little Miss for Little Miss Christmas and Little Miss Princess, two points for Mr. Messy and Little Miss Naughty, and Tom Kitten is uh, far and away the best answer for Beatrix Potter. Well done if you've got any of those low answers. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our second round, we have to say goodbye to another pair. I can't bear it. Wonderful low scores across that round. 34 is really not a high score at all. Uh, <laughs> but this is where we say goodbye to Grace Dent and Hanif Qureshi. Thank you okay. so much for coming to play with us. It's been wonderful to have you here. Thank you. But for Sally and Charlie, Gillian Fern, it is now time for our head to head. Well, congratulations, Gillian, Fern, Sally and Charlie. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,750. <laughs> and this is where we decide who goes through to the final to play for that jackpot, and we do it by making you go head-to-head. -head. The difference is you're now allowed to confer before you give your answers. And the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. Here is your first question, and it concerns negative politicians. Richard. Mm, we're going to show you five pictures now of politicians, but in negative. Can you work out who they are? Wow. It's going to yeah. be great. Thanks. Let's reveal our five negative politicians, and here they are. We've got A... B... C. D. And E. There we are. Five politicians in negative. Now, Gillian Fern, you've been our low scorers so far, so mm -hmm. you will go first. Should we go B? Yeah, it's B. Yeah. yeah, OK. B it is, and we think Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel, B, say Gilly and Fern. Sally and Charlie, do you fancy having a go at the rest of them? Just... I don't know, A, vaguely like David Cameron, but I wouldn't put any money on it. I think D is Trump, obviously. C, is that Juncker? But I think, we're, should we go for E? E, we're going for E. We'll go for E, which we think is Macron. E. Macron. So we have Angela Merkel and Emmanuel Macron. Gilly and Fern have gone for Angela Merkel for B. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Angela Merkel. <laughs> 59. Sally and Charlie have gone for E, Macron, Emmanuel Macron. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It is right. And it wins you the points. Ooh. Look at that. Oh, oh and hello. Oh, that gets to eight. Very well done indeed. Macron, down to eight. <laughs> Sally and Charlie, that means after one question, you are up 1-0. Um, A, do you know A? Ah, it's Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. Ah, yeah, Justin Canada. Trudeau. Uh, he would have scored you five points. Well done if you said that. 
C is a pointless answer. It is Michael D. Higgins, ninth president of Ireland. Very well done if you said that. And D, this is the only photograph that isn't actually a negative. That's actually a genuine photograph. <laughs> uh, and that is, um, that is Trump. Uh, he would have scored you 85 points. Thank you very much indeed. OK, here comes your second question. Gillian Fern, Sally and Charlie get to answer this one first, but you have to win it to stay in the game, so good luck. Our second question concerns... hymns. Richard. Yeah, we're about to play you clips of five hymns now. It's going to be upbeat stuff, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, <laughs> we just need you to tell us the title of the hymn, please, or the title by which they're most commonly known. OK, let's reveal our five hymns, and here they come. We have got A... Here is B. Here is C. Here's D. And here is E. Now, Sally and Charlie, you go first this time. I'm sure that's what it is. Well, yeah, yeah, we're going to go for E. E. And we're going to say all things bright and beautiful. All things bright and beautiful. OK, all things bright and beautiful. Now, Jilly and Fern. Um, can I be brave and go for D? Yep. D, breathe on me, breath of God. D, breathe on me, breath of God. OK, so we have all things bright and beautiful and breathe on me, breath of God. Uh, Sally and Charlie have gone for all things bright and beautiful for E. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Mm -hmm. I remember I fell over. 56 for all things bright and beautiful. Gillian Fern have gone for Breathe On Me, Breath of God, for D. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Breathe On Me, Breath of God. No, bad luck. I'm afraid it's not Breathe On Me, Breath of God. Uh, and that means, very well done indeed, Sally and Charlie, after only two questions, you are straight through to the final 2 uh. No. Yeah, it's worth a punt. There was actually a pointless answer, D. And it was only written in 1986. Uh, and it is, be still for the presence <gasps> of the Lord, I'm afraid. Very, very well done if you said that. Um, now, let's take a listen to the others. So A was Lord of the, the Dance. The Lord of the Dance. Absolutely. The coolest named hymn there is. That would have scored you 19. B. Abide with me. Abide with me. That would have scored you 35. All of these would have won the point. And C is Amazing yes, Grace. Yes. And that would have scored you 65. Well done. Thank well you done. very well done. much Look indeed. So that. the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round is Jilly Cooper and Fern Britton. Oh, thank I'm you so for sorry. Me. We've had fun, though. Had a lovely time. Um, mm. Come back and play again with us, please. We'd it's been such to. a pleasure having you here. Thank, thank you so much. Jilly and Fern, thank wonderful. You so much. Thank you. Sally and Charlie, it is now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Sally and Charlie. You've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot for your charities. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,750. <laughs> Ready?
Oh, it was touch and go. Could have been you in the first it, round. It could have been. I, I let the whole ship down. You know? No. <laughs> yeah, no. It's actually entirely fitting you are here because you won the pointless answer. So you have contributed to that jackpot. Um, but no, fabulous to have you here. Now, as always, you get to choose your category for the last round. We'll put four up on the board. Um, we've just got to hope there's something up there that you like the look of. Shall we have a look at today's selection yes. and see what we have for you? Farm animals. <laughs> The band Queen, Nun films, musicals based on Shakespeare. I don't know enough about Queen personally. No, I, 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 and nuns really fail me. But <laughs> films... none of this and none of that, apart from a few obvious nun films. What are the obvious nun films? Nuns on the Run. Nuns on the Run and Whoopi Goldberg. Sister Act. A, yeah. I, personally, I think I'm going to. Uh, I'd be yeah. better in the films area than the music. Okay, let, but but I don't let, want to let, no, no, no. Let's go for the know. films. We'll we'll okay. we'll do it together. We'll find a nun. We'll go for nun <laughs> films. Okay, very good. Uh, very best of luck. Nun films, it is, Richard. Okay, three questions for you here. Let's see if any of the films you just mentioned are there. We're looking for the cast of any of the following three films, please. From 1990, Nuns on the Run. Uh, we're looking for anyone from the 1959 film The Nun Story, or we're looking for any of the cast of The Sound of Music from 1965. So, according to IMDb, anyone who had a credited performance in any of those three films. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that jackpot for your charities is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Uh, let's put 60 seconds up. On the clock, there they are. Your time starts now. The, the, is it Audrey Hepburn who was in the Nun story? That very beautiful, you know. That it could well have been. Yeah. She, you know, she was in the uh, Tiffany, the one, uh, you know, um, Breakfast yeah. Tiffany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was her. I'm pretty sure. You know, that was I, her. how are you on the Sound of Music? Well, I, mean, I, I, I know there is one. a very famous nun in it, and it's mother, the mother nun. Who but it doesn't have to be a nun, it could be anybody in the film. Oh, it could be anyone. Oh, yeah. well, hold on, there's that... Um, Any of the children would probably uh, give us a good answer. Yeah, uh, Von Trapp would give us quite a good answer as well. Oh, yeah, um, Christopher Plummer, I think. No, was he was... Uh, oh, God, I can't remember any of those. Are we allowed to do the live TV version? Oh, <laughs> that! <laughs> if there was any justice, yes. Uh, uh, no, who was the old expert. guy? You know, the guy that comes along and he's all keen Ten on... Ten seconds left. That, that's a rare... Oh, that's a rare one. Um, all right, we're running out of time. We're running we out of time. Any, have we? No, we haven't got any. Um, that's not going to be pointless, is it? No. Who was in Nuns on the Run? OK, that, I'm afraid, is your time up. You're going to have to make up your three answers as we go along. Oh, well, do you want to go for Audrey Hepburn on this? Yeah, I, I, I... Yes. We'll go for Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn it. for... Yeah. Nun story. For a nun story. It's a bit obvious. We'll go for Robbie Coltrane for Nuns Robbie on Robbie Coltrane for Nuns it's on the Run. Really pointless. Uh, Christopher Plummer. And Christopher Plummer. OK, there we are. Three answers. Uh, now, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless <laughs> answer? <laughs> to become a nun? No. <laughs> you're getting below 50. Or well, we'll go with Audrey Hepburn. OK, well. Audrey Hepburn we'll put last. Least likely to be pointless? <sighs> Christopher, Christopher Plummer. Plummer. OK. Please. OK, but well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, then. And here they are. We have got... Christopher Plummer, Robbie Coltrane and Audrey Hepburn. Well, very good luck. Quite a tough oh. category, that, as it turns out. <laughs> now, if you were to win that jackpot for your charities, which charities would they be? Sally? Well, it's going to be my charity, which I've started this year, and I'm really proud of it. It's called New Word, and it's for having a different look at dyslexia with a very positive eye, and it's wanting to associate it with creativity instead of a negative of disability. Uh, Charlie, what about you? Uh, I've gone for the reading agency, as this is uh, literary pointless. Uh, they do, well, they do a lot of work with literacy, particularly through the libraries. Fabulous. <laughs> New word and reading agency. Very good indeed. OK, well, best of luck. Let's hope one of these answers... Wouldn't it be lovely if one yeah, of these fine. answers... It would be amazing. ...turned out to be pointless yeah. and won that jackpot for your charities? OK, your first answer was Christopher Plummer. In this case, we were looking for any cast member of The Sound of Music. If this is pointless, it'll win you £2,750 for your charities. Let's see how many. About 100 people named Christopher Plummer. It's right. Everybody. 
just has to go all the way down to zero and that money will be going off to your charities. Down we go. Christopher Plummer takes us into the 20s. 26. Not a bad score in the general run of things, but sadly in this round, I'm afraid, not a no. pointless answer. Only two more shots at today's jackpot. Your next answer was Robbie Coltrane. In this case, we were looking for cast members of Nuns on the Run. If this is pointless, it'll win £2,750 for your charities. Let's see how many people said Robbie Coltrane. Oh, that's right. Well, it's right. Again, another correct answer. Your first answer, Christopher Plummer, took us all the way down to 26. Robbie Coltrane takes us to 31. <laughs> I'm afraid, yes, again, not a pointless answer, which means we only have one more shot at today's jackpot. Everything is now riding on your third and final answer, which is Audrey Hepburn. And in this case, we were looking for cast members of The Nun Story. If this is right and it is pointless, it will win you £2,750 for your charities. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Audrey Hepburn. Is it pointless? It's right. We've had three correct answers. 26 was what Christopher Plummer scored you. 31 is what Robbie Coltrane scored you. Audrey Hepburn, now take us down to see oh. Not quite in single figures. Ten! That's a great score. Three good low scores there, but unfortunately we didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £2,750. However, as it's a celebrity special, we are going to donate £500 to each celebrity pair for their respective charities, so there you go. <laughs> Sally and Charlie, as ever, great pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much for coming to join us on this show. It's been a fabulous, fabulous show. Thank you. And a great performance across the whole show, so very well done, Indy. And you get to take a pointless trophy here <laughs> in recognition of that. Yeah, a really tough final category, I have to say. Uh, we'll go through the three boards. We'll start with Nuns on the Run. Camille uh, Kuduri played Rose Tyler's mum in Doctor Who. Tom Hickey, Oliver Parker, who's now a director. Uh, Julie Graham, who uh, better known these days for William and Mary with Martin Clunes. In fact, everyone apart from Robbie Coltrane, Eric Idle and Janet Sussman, every other cast member was a pointless answer. Uh, the Nun story. Few famous names here. Colin Dewhurst, Lionel Jeffries is a pointless answer. Peggy Ashcroft, Rosalie Crutchley. Again, everyone there apart from Audrey Hepburn, Peter Finch, Edith Evans and Dean Jagger was a pointless answer. And Sound of Music. Uh, Angela Cartwright, Charmian Carr, Eleanor Parker, Heather Menzies, uh, Julie Andrews, Christopher Plummer, Nicholas Hammond and Kim Carrath, the only ones that scored points there. Who was your character in the, your TV sound of Uncle music? Uncle Max. Uh, he was a pointless answer as well. Richard Hayden played oh, Uncle Max. Yeah. yeah. How about that? How about that? Perhaps in 40 years' time you will be a pointless answer. <laughs> yeah. If I, yeah. if I, you know what? I would put money on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for playing Charlie and Sally. It's been lovely having you. Charlie and Sally, everyone. <laughs> uh, join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>